Hello, welcome back to the channel. <clears throat> Glad you could join me. Today we're going to be talking about New Mexico, the land of enchantment. So, <clears throat> New Mexico comes from uh, Spanish origins. Um, so, the first new, obviously, is the translation, but it was originally Nuevo Mexico. <clears throat> and we've, uh, you know, used the English translation, so it became, becomes New Mexico. Um, Mexico, or Mexico, uh, comes from a Native American word, um, which was the Valley of Mexico and was the capital of the Aztec Empire. Um, <clears throat> and they used, so... Uh, Francisco Vasquez de Coronado, he used the term Nuevo Mexico to refer to the territory um, that they were exploring to the north of the Mexican territory. So that's where that came from. Um, and then the Land of Enchantment, apparently uh, it was part of a promotional campaign in 1935 to promote travel to New Mexico. Uh, so it became... It, was their state tourism bureau that um, were trying to attract the tourist dollars to New Mexico. And it then became the uh, nickname for the state or the state state nickname. <clears throat> so um, we already touched a little bit on some of the history of New Mexico, but we're going to jump backwards to the statehood and some of the other facts. So statehood was, was issued January 6th, 1912, making it the 47th state to join the Union. The capital is Santa Fe. Uh, population is 2.1 million, making it the 36th most populous state. Uh, Area-wise, it's 120... <clears throat> excuse me. 121,591 square miles, or 314,915 kilometers squared, uh, making it the fifth largest state. Largest cities, Albuquerque, Las Cruces, Rio Rancho, and Santa Fe. <clears throat> and we can already start seeing the, the Spanish roots of, of some of the state history. So 1540 is when the Spanish came into the area. There's not a real um, firm date, but uh, Francisco Vasquez de Coronado, he was the first who documented coming into the area, and that was in 1540. And then in 1598, <clears throat> San Juan de, uh, de los Caballeros was um, established. It was the first, um, the first official or uh, first established s Spanish settlement in the area, and it was uh, established. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry about that. By Juan de Oñate, I think I said that right, but I could be completely and utterly wrong. Uh, Mexico then declared its independence from Spain, uh, and became its own country. Then we had the Mexican-American War which lasted uh, from 1846 to 1848. Uh, the United States occupied that territory, which was then ceded to the United States through the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo, which officially um, ended the Mexican-American War. <clears throat> 1850, a uh, territory ship was granted uh, to the New Mexico Territory, uh, statehood in 1912. World War II was a big part of the history of the state because this is where the Manhattan Project was uh, was uh, pursued, the, the research and everything that brought us the atomic bomb. Um, the state was really big into agriculture early in its history. It has since diver diversified from there um, <clears throat> into mining or technology, science, tourism, uh, and mining. So 
that it, obviously it has diversified. The other thing is that uh, I would not have thought that the climate of <clears throat> New Mexico would be uh, very conducive to um, farming. So it's a good thing that they diversified. <clears throat> The climate, and this is, like I said, this is where um, I, f I feel personally that the climate is not that um, well suited to the climate, not the climate, the climate and the geography is not well suited to agriculture. So <clears throat> deserts, um, the southern and southwest portion of Mexico are part of the Chihuahuan Desert. Uh, which is the largest, apparently the largest desert in North America. Um, <clears throat> and we have uh, mountains. The Rocky Mountains extends through that part of Mexico. Um, and we have quite a lot of mountainous areas in the state, that which then also New Mexico is part of the Colorado Plateau, which we have these... Um, plateau and mesa uh, formations <clears throat> that make it part of the state. Uh, there's only a very small part of the state where the Rio, Gran Rio, Rio Grande flows through the state that has that it has some arable, farmable land. Uh, a lot of the rest of the state is really not suited to it. So you have a lot of deep gorges and canyons, there's caves and caverns, there's some volcanic features that are mixed in with all of this, uh, with all of the mountain and the plains and uh, plateaus and mesas, and then again, a lot of desert in the state. Uh, the western part of the United States, one of the features of the western part of the United States is the desert. So there's a, uh, Arizona, New Mexico, Colorado, uh, Utah, up into Wyoming, into Idaho. It's really quite dry. And, and Nevada, ne Nevada, the the eastern half of the or the eastern portion of the state. I shouldn't say half because there there's the Sierra <clears throat> Nevadas that separate Nevada from California, and a lot of the The, the moisture gets deposited on the western slopes, and so we have a quite a dry area right there in the middle of the, of the United States. <clears throat> Climate arid to semi-arid. Um, and um, the thing is, is that what you get with uh, New Mexico as far as climate is that it is in in some ways a lot div uh, a lot more diverse than other areas in the United States even though it is an arid or semi-arid climate because you also have to take ele elevation and location into account because you have the desert regions which are the the summer the temperatures go above 100 degrees where and the winters not uh, are a lot more mild 50 to 70 degrees Fahrenheit instead of uh, dropping down really low. But then you have the mountainous area, which does affect the temperatures again. You have 70 to 80 degrees in the summer um, and 30 to 50, which is one minus one to 10 degrees Celsius. Let me back up because if you're going into the, the summer uh, and you're 100 degrees Fahrenheit is 37.8 degrees Celsius, it's sweltering. Um, <clears throat> one of the nice things about it is you don't have to then deal with the humidity. You just feel like you're being baked in an oven, which, you know, if you have been following some of the news recently, you've noticed that there have been uh, actually a number of deaths uh, attributed to the weather in the United States, the, the heat. Uh, I just read this morning of a man in Texas who, who died. Uh, he was a delivery truck driver. He was uh, UPS or FedEx, something like that. Uh, he was out doing his deliveries, didn't feel well, and uh, eventually passed away. So you do have to be um, very careful in the in the summer months in some of these areas. And I didn't include Texas, but I should have included Texas in the desert area because part of Texas does uh, 
extend into the the desert does extend into part of Texas. <clears throat> but anyway, uh, so then you have the mountainous regions, like I said, the and the uh, the the those mountainous regions are a little bit more um, uh, hospitable as far as the temperature goes. It it does by the elevation lower the temperature a bit, um, and that goes for the the plateaus and mesa area, which are very similar to the the mountainous areas as well. And then you have the Rio Grande area and the the plains area that. <clears throat> that are even more hospitable. They do have a little bit higher temperature because the elevation is a little bit lower. Um, they have 80 to 90, which is 27 to 32 in the summer, and then 50 to uh, 60, which is 10 to 15 degrees Celsius in the winter. And kind of both areas are, are, are fairly, fairly similar as far as that goes. Uh, in the area of geography, or in geography, we just got done geography with geography moving on to industry. Um, in the industry, these are the top industries in, in New Mexico. We have federal government and military, energy and natural resources, uh, tourism, hospitality, agriculture, healthcare and medical, manufacturing, um, education and research, film and media, and construction and real estate. So uh, with the uh, government, the Los Alamos uh, National Laboratory, which is where Project Manhattan was uh, was researched uh, is in New Mexico. As I said, Sandia National Laboratories, Kirtland Air Force Base, Holloman Air Force Base, the White Sands Missile, Missile Range is there. Moving on into energy and natural resources, we have Chevron, uh, Occidental Petroleum, Devon Energy, XTO uh, Energy, um, moving on to or we'll save the tourism and hospitality for later. We'll go into agriculture. The chili pepper industry is huge in New Mexico. We have pecan farming, farming, dairy farming, um, apparently cattle ranching and onion farming and melons. Who knew? Alfalfa and hay production. There's lots going on there. Uh, into healthcare and medical, we have the University of New Mexico Health System, Presbyterian Healthcare Services. Christus St. Vincent Health Systems, Loveless Health Systems, uh, <clears throat> into manufacturing. In Intel has a has a manufacturing facility there. Raytheon, Honeywell, General Mills, Lockheed Martin, uh, Ecl Eclipse Aerospace, <clears throat> uh, Education and Research, University of New Mexico. Uh, we also already mentioned the Los Alamos National Re Laboratory. Uh, New Mexico State University, San, uh, <clears throat> New Mexico Institute of Mining and Technology, Santa Fe Institute, and then into uh, film and media, Netflix has been producing shows in New Mexico, NBC Universal, Sony Pictures, uh, Albuquerque Studios. Uh, I didn't realize that that New Mexico had such a large presence in in um, media and film just wasn't on my radar there. Uh, <clears throat> then in construction, real estate, Brad, Bradbury Stam, HB Construction, Jane's Corporation, Decker, Parrish, Sabatini. Uh, yeah, I could go on, but we're not going to. So that's what you can expect as far as work goes, industry goes, there in New Mexico. Uh, tourism. There's a lot of Native American culture uh, in New Mexico. So various tribes... Uh, there's a lot of tribal museums and cultural centers and historic sites. You have the Albuquerque International Balloon Fiesta, uh, largest hot air balloon festival. So yeah, uh, it's interesting to to see uh, hot air balloons go up. They are so slow, so slow. It's really it's really kind of funny to see them inflate and then slowly rise into the sky. Um, <clears throat> Of course, we have the 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 outdoor activities, um, hiking, uh, camping, mountain biking, rock climbing. Some of the places that you might go to do these: Sandia Mountains, Bandelier National Monument, White Sands National Park, which I've I've put on here. Uh, White Sands National Park is a white gypsum sand dune area, so it's a it's you go there. Uh, they have dune sledding. Um, 
stargazing is pretty popular there because there's nothing there so you don't have a lot of light pollution which is interesting um, i remember for the first time really seeing the milky way when i was out camping and there were, we were just so far away from a city that there were no lights anywhere else and so it was it was so clear so they're you know going out to see the 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 stars and stuff at, at White White Sands National Park is a <clears throat> interesting place, or, and is a great way to, to see the stars. Uh, there's Carlsbad Caverns National Park, so you can go under underground and see the the caves and stuff. Uh, <clears throat> I haven't been in a lot of caves, but I've always found it interesting to go through some caves. And they also have you know tons of ghost towns and historic sites. So you got Madrid, Lincoln, uh, Pinos Altos are some of the places that, that you can you can go and you know uh, on the uh, historic sites uh, Taos Pueblo Georgia O'Keeffe Museum <clears throat> um, one thing that you uh, you may have heard of is the Taos hum so Taos is a is a city in uh, New Mexico and it has uh, for years been plagued by a hum. Not, now, not everyone hears this hum. Only some people hear it. But apparently it's uh, all pervasive and they have no idea what's causing it. So that's interesting in and of itself. Uh, <clears throat> in New Mexico, you may not throw knives at men wearing suits. So if you were thinking about it, no. Cannot do it. Um, vagrant dog laws, uh, Bellin, uh, New Mexico, you, your dog cannot be on the street, which I, I, I say that, but you know, most places have leash laws and things like that, but the, in New Mexico, it's called a, a vagrant dog law. Apparently, uh, you may not, uh, steal lizards in New Mexico. It was illegal to commit lizard robbery. Well, so you had to, um, you have to make a, an offer to purchase the lizard. You can't just steal it, which I, I, I don't know. Um, firearms regulations in New Mexico. So, uh, a, there are a lot of states that have laws about what we call open carry, which means you can carry a gun. Uh, and for most of the, most for most intents and purposes, uh, the idea is that you conceal carry, that you don't just flash your gun around. But in New Mexico, uh, there are laws that permit open carry and you don't have to have a permit. So like a police officer does open carry because their gun is usually visible, uh, you know, and so that is a type of open carry. But the thing is, is that the police officer is licensed to do that. So most people, like I said, they get a license to carry a gun, but it's a concealed carry. So they have to conceal it when they're carrying it. In New Mexico, you don't have to do that. And you don't have to have a permit either. You can just do it, interestingly enough. Um, <clears throat> now, this one is more of a reported law than a uh, an actual law. So they had, propo they had proposed a law to ban the hunting of Bigfoot. Now, I don't know that um, Bigfoot hunting has ever been a problem for New Mexico, but New Mexico apparently has a, a, a an interest and a fascination with cryptozoology, and so they are interested in protecting cryptids. I was more familiar with like the cryptids, uh, well, Bigfoot, the you know, more of the up in the. Pacific Northwest, Washington, Oregon, that area, rather than down into uh, New Mexico. But anyway, um, <clears throat> let's see where to go. Uh, ladies night. So in, in 1989, there was a judge in New Mexico that he basically said ladies night is, is uh, discriminatory and basically made it illegal for clubs, uh, whatever, you, whatever else, to promote a ladies night. Uh, it has since been overturned, but uh, it was interesting that, that they had decided to uh, <clears throat> make it so that that you can, you know, that it's, that whether you're a man or a woman, you 
there's not a you're not being discriminated against which yeah that's interesting um, so on to the trivia Zozobra I think is what it's called I got a picture of it here apparently they um, call it old man gloom and so in Santa Fe they have this giant pup puppet and it's supposed to symbolize worries and troubles and they burn it <laughs> in this festival um, New Mexico is called the chili capital of the world there are a bunch of different uh, distinct varieties of chili peppers uh, the hatch chili being one of them that's uh, part of state culture and, and recipes and, and everything else so <clears throat> the state has an official question apparently I didn't realize this was even a thing that you could have, but it's red or green. And this is um, when you go to, a say, a, a Mexican restaurant, uh, whether you want a red or green chili sauce on your meal. They also have what are called earth ships, which I'd heard of these. I, I'd heard of earth, sh the concept of earth, or I'd, I'd heard the term, but I didn't know what the concept was. And then, um, to be honest, I thought it had something to do with their fascination with um, extraterrestrials. Apparently, an Earth ship is a home that was built uh, using recycled materials. So they have this, this Earth ship thing going on there. Uh, passive solar heating, eco-friendly features, like I said. It's an off they call it an off the grid home, grid home um so it's not connected to like pa the the utilities so power water whatever um and they're called earth ships kind of a weird name for it for a recycled a uh, home built out of recycled uh, materials but there you go um now we have roswell so there's a a pretty big history in New Mexico of uh, UFOs and extraterrestrials and all that other stuff. And it stems from the UFO crash landing uh, in, that supposedly occurred, I believe it was in the 1950s in Roswell, New Mexico, which because of that, there's a lot of alien themed tourism uh, to draw people into the state to take, you know, so there's shops, museums, and other attractions designed to bring uh, extraterrestrial and UFO enthusiasts to New Mexico. And then uh, Breaking Bad. I had heard of Breaking Bad. I've never seen it. The, the show just doesn't, doesn't appeal to me. But the, I do know that there's a one, one scene in a movie in, or in the show where um, Walter White gets upset and tosses a pizza on the roof of his house. Um, well, the, that, that house exists uh, in uh, New Mexico. It's not just like uh, on a lot or um, anything like that. It's actually somebody's house. And the owner of the house has been asking people to stop throwing pizza on his roof. You guys are so dumb. So dumb. Fans are so dumb sometimes. Um Seriously, why would you go and, and waste the money to buy a perfectly good pizza and then toss it on some rando's roof? It's so stupid. Anyway, there you go. That's uh, New Mexico in a nutshell. Yes, I probably got stuff wrong. Yes, there's a lot more about New Mexico that we could delve into, and, I'm, and I hope to be able to keep doing that, uh, bring you more interesting information about New Mexico and, uh, and the other states. Um that's it for today. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, like, subscribe, put the bell on so you get notifications. Comment down below. Let me know if I got something wrong. Uh, let me know if you've been to New Mexico. I actually, uh, no, I haven't been to New Mexico. I was going to say I had, but I, um, it was, I've been to three of the four corners. I haven't actually been to the, the fourth one yet. I have to go sometime. Anyway, that's it for today. Uh, like, subscribe, Etc. Etc. Later.